everyone welcome back to another video today i am trying out seven different oatmeal recipes linda sun has featured on her channel uh, i will link the video in the description box but she basically tried 20 different recipes all featuring oatmeal and i just picked out seven that i really liked and that i had ingredients for yeah, so I thought it would be a really fun idea to recreate these recipes and show you guys my process of making it and also how I personally find these recipes itself. I did have a rating from it from 1 to 10. You'll see that after the recipe is done. Luckily, Linda does have a huge Google Doc that everyone can check where it has all the oatmeal recipes. Um, and I'll also include where I got the recipes as well specifically for this video. But yeah, today we are making overnight oats, birthday cake edition. Um, it's basically just a basic overnight oats, but you just add sprinkles to it. I wanted to start off the week pretty basic and simple. Okay, so it is 12.44. I opened the oatmeal. I think it was a birthday cake one I made. Um, <laughs> I did it. It's alright. I didn't use maple syrup because I thought it would be too sweet, too much sugar, but honestly, I kind of regret not adding it. This is okay on its own, uh, but I would prefer it to be a little bit more sweet. If anything, I would have added protein powder in here, and maybe I guess I could add a little bit more, a little bit more sprinkles, but I, like, I might as well just have some fruit with it, naturally sweeten it. But so far, I'd give this, like, it's all right, like a 6.5 or maybe 6. It's not that good. It's all right. I don't know. But while it was still fresh, the sprinkles kind of bled through. So it's like a weird color, if you can see that. You can really taste the peanut butter in here, which is nice. But I also put like three tablespoons, so. And it's really thick too. If you can see the consistency, it's really thick. And it just looks weird. The next recipe is a simple apple and cinnamon oats. I don't know why, but I feel like I really messed up the simple recipes and did better with the complex ones. Literally all you had to do was chop some apples, cook it in some cinnamon, and then add the oatmeal. But somehow, I don't know, I read all the directions and tried to make sure that I'm as accurate as possible, but I'm like 99% sure that I did this wrong. I'm pretty sure I wasn't supposed to add the water with the apples, I don't know why that would have made sense to me at that time i don't know and then i added the already cooked oatmeals and then i added a protein powder and i ran out of the chocolate one so i used mint which was such a bad idea usually i just use it to sweeten it but you could really taste the mint in this one so it was like apple and mint oatmeal it just tasted really bad but this is my fault completely not the recipe Um, a little bit of a spoiler, but this was 100% my favorite, favorite recipe out of all seven that I made. Um, it was a little bit more work to make, but it was so, so good. This is basically just protein powder, oatmeal, and some stuff to bind it. <laughs> uh, in the recipe, it specifically said not to use maple syrup, but you can literally see me putting in like three tablespoons of that. Um, the main reason for that is because it doesn't really bind the energy balls that good it kind of like falls apart and i will admit that that is true however i still really prefer maple syrup over honey i don't know i just feel like it, it just tastes better and gives more flavor uh, and also the balls were like an interesting consistency they were kind of chewy but since the oatmeal wasn't cooked it was also kind of hard at the same time if anything this is the one recipe that i really encourage you to try my entire family loved it another overnight oats i'm not really a big fan of them to be honest but this one was so good another spoiler again but this is actually my second favorite recipe out of the seven that i tried it was just so simple but so so good and filling and you can really taste the chocolate with the peanut butter i don't know how to say it but the ratio for each just fit each other perfectly if you are a person on the go or you don't really have that much time to make breakfast i would highly recommend this recipe because even though it looks kind of small the oats do absorb all the milk and it's so filling like i was so full after 
and like I mentioned before this footage is like a month old so this was back in Easter when I was making those yummy Pillsbury cookies and look how cute they are they're just so cute and puffy when they come right out of the oven I'm not gonna lie, I haven't tried these recipes after this video, uh, none at all, but now that I'm looking back at this, I think I'm gonna try it again because it was so good. True story, so when I was preparing this little care package of the goodies, I was gonna deliver it to my friend the next day. However, when I was filming this, I didn't know that there was new lockdown regulations, so I basically had all those cookies to myself. Not sure why I didn't start the week off with this recipe because it's literally just the basic protein oats that Linda has. It's nothing special. I'm pretty sure I did it wrong again. I'm pretty sure you're supposed to add the mushed bananas after the oatmeal. I don't know. But yeah, I would give this like a six, seven. I'm not really an oatmeal fan to be honest. So I wasn't really feeling it. And I thought the banana on top was like extra work. I don't know. This just wasn't a hit for me. Once again, I'm pretty sure I messed up this recipe. I don't know why I call myself a good cook or a baker because I'm not. <laughs> I just do a bunch of things and try to make the best of it and it doesn't really work out that way. So what I did, because I don't want to go out and buy oat flour, it's kind of expensive. Uh, I just went ahead and blended the oats in a blender obviously and this is me straining it so that i can get it as fine as possible and then i'm just adding the steel oats to give it more texture the blending of the oats and the straining probably took me like an extra 10 to 20 minutes i don't know why i make it so hard for myself and this is me just putting together all the wet ingredients honestly I feel like this is a pretty basic recipe. I feel like you can do it even without the oats. You can just use normal flour. I'm pretty sure the recipe called for three-fourths of a cup of chocolate chips but my sister legitimately gets mad at me if there's not enough chocolate chips so I basically doubled that measurement so it's not as healthy as it looks but it was actually really really good. I'm pretty sure I could have just put it in one whole tin but I wasn't sure how much it could actually hold so I just divided the mixture into two and put that in the oven together. While I'm waiting for the banana bread to bake, I went ahead and did a workout. If you guys haven't already, I will link my video where I worked out to growing bananas for a complete month. It was really fun. I have no idea why this is so frustrating to me, but every time I make banana bread, it never rises. Like, look how flat that is. It looks so bad. It doesn't even look appetizing. This is me trying to look and see if it's cooked. I mean, it tasted good, but it didn't really look appetizing. I'm not sure, I mean, I guess it did call for baking soda, but I didn't really have that, so I just used baking powder. So since it looks flat and it looks like biscotti, <laughs> I just tried to add some peanut butter and some sprinkles to make it look a little appetizing. But honestly, the banana bread was actually really, really good. I would make it again. Obviously, try and get oat flour instead of blending it and spending like 10 minutes doing that. But I enjoyed it, my sisters really liked it as well, and it's just a hit for me. Ooh. 
The stir fry recipe is a really, really unique one. Honestly, I'm pretty sure this was the one that made me want to do this entire video in the first place. I thought it was really interesting that someone can use oats. I mean, technically oats are grains, so it kind of makes sense that you would replace that, especially if you're on a budget. But actually, rice is pretty cheap itself. <laughs> but anyways, um, I went ahead and tried this recipe out. It's really basic. It's basically just frozen veggies, a sauce of choice, and the oats. Luckily, it didn't take that long to prepare the dish. It did only have oats and veggies, which is good, but I did want to make it a little bit more balanced. So I added some protein, and you can see here that I add in three jumbo size shrimps. Uh, very specific, but they were really huge. I think that's like a decent amount of protein for me personally. And also, I'm pretty sure, once again, I messed up this recipe. I'm not sure why. Maybe I just like think it's messed up, but I did okay. But I tried to soak the oats for at least four to eight hours, like it said in the recipe. But it was just weird. Like, it was soft and it was kind of mushy, which I guess that's what you can expect. But I just thought, I'm, I don't know. I think there's something wrong with it. I'd rather have it a little bit more hard and chewy to give you that rice-like texture. Overall, honestly, I would not make this again. I don't think I can ever picture myself craving it or thinking about it again, honestly. I just think it's just weird. But I guess if you want to spice up your dinner, I would recommend trying it just to say that you did because I've never heard of anyone who had stir-fry oats for dinner. This one was a really, really fun recipe. I think this was the second reason why I wanted to create this video. I thought it was so interesting to create a crust out of oatmeal. Obviously, this isn't unheard of, but for me, I just thought it was so cool. And it's just a great way to use up your oatmeal if you have any extra. I also appreciated the fact that they use egg whites just to add in the extra protein. I think that's really cool because you're getting like a, basically a balanced pizza crust for a slice just all carbs, you know, like at least it has a little bit of protein in there. As fun as this recipe sounds, it was a little bit more difficult and time consuming out of the rest of them. So the crust itself was easy. You could literally just blend all the ingredients together and then bake it and put some toppings. But once again, I made it complicated for myself and went out of my way to make it longer for absolutely no reason so the crust was fine you literally bake it for a couple of minutes but i wanted to make it like really hearty so as you can see i had some meatballs in there that would be part of my toppings instead of pepperoni because it's just easier to make and i had it with me in the freezer and i also wanted to slice up some cucumbers on the side just to make it refreshing but what I should have done is make the sauce first and then start prepping for everything because the oatmeal crust basically took like five minutes to make and then like five, ten minutes to bake. But the sauce, since you need to reduce it a little bit and make sure all the flavors sink in, um, that took a while. So my oven was on for quite a bit for at least like an hour and a half, which is really annoying because I hate wasting energy. For the sauce, it could have just been really simple, which is basically tomato sauce, but I went ahead and sauteed some onion, some garlic, and chopped up some bell pepper and then put it in the sauce itself. And since I don't really like it hard, <laughs> I tried to simmer it down and kind of soften in the sauce, which took a long time. So if you are planning to do this recipe on your own, because it is genuinely really easy and simple, I would just recommend trying to make the sauce first to be more time efficient. And to add on to the time efficient saving hacks, I would definitely recommend prepping all the toppings before the crust is done because even chopping the tomatoes and chopping the meatballs took quite some time. Um, it was nice because it was fresh, but I was going to put it in the oven anyway. Also side note, I didn't add any cheese onto my pizza because I personally don't really care for cheese. So yeah, you won't find that here. <laughs> Once again, I messed up 
it's so much easier to put the frozen spinach first and then the toppings because one it, the spinach doesn't go everywhere first of all but two it's just more visually appealing when you can see what's on it instead of just like leaves <laughs> Luckily, I made a double batch, so the one that just looks like a pile of leaves was for me and then I'm making another one for my family where I put the spinach first and then put the toppings on. And you can really see how pretty this is with all the colors and the different toppings it has, you know? It just looks really healthy. And yeah, this is me just popping it in to melt the spinach and make it all nice and crunchy. And that's basically it for all the seven recipes that I tried. It was really fun. But looking back at it in hindsight, I'm pretty sure I messed up like <laughs> all of the recipes. Um, so if anything, this video will just be me messing up and teaching you guys what not to do instead of what to do for these recipes. But nonetheless, I hope you guys still enjoyed. But yeah, that is basically the end of the video. Thank you guys for watching if you are all the way here. <laughs> I really appreciate it. It means a lot. Um, yeah, I think the recipes were decent, but I think it's also important just to continue experimenting, you know, with healthy foods that you like and you might find one that you really enjoy. So that is the end for me. I will see you guys next Monday with my new video. I'm really, really excited for this one. Yeah, see you soon. <laughs> Bye.